Let's hear what she has to say. Dear President von der Leyen, dear Ursula, distinguished guests, first of all, I would like to thank you for your invitation to address the Cohesion Forum, the eight of its kind, that is taking place at such a challenging time for European democracy. Our European project, our European strength, grows from the cohesion of our European ambition for all of the regions that together make up our European Union. And together we condemn in the strongest possible terms, the unlawful Russian invasion of Ukraine. We express our solidarity with all those suffering and all those killed. And we stop to reflect on how fortunate we are to have built piece by piece a democratic European solidarity project that continues to stand the test of time. And in our strength, we must keep standing with Ukraine. The Eighth Cohesion Forum is an important political event that gives us the opportunity to focus together on major challenges of European cohesion, on the major challenges of our European cohesion policy. This cohesion policy was designed to bring Europeans together. Its purpose is to reduce regional economic and social imbalances across EU states and regions. Together with other EU policies, it aims to improve and sustain the well-being for all European citizens against a background of globalization, disparities linked to the green and digital transitions, and now also linked to the pressures on our society that will result from war at our doorstep. EU cohesion policy investments made through the European Regional Development Fund, the European Social Fund and the European Cohesion Fund have allowed regions of our Union to invest and reach a greater level of economic development. These investments have created quality employment and the modernization of infrastructures. But it has also provided much more. During the COVID pandemic, it was through the structures of our cohesion policy that we were able to respond quickly to a crisis and make additional funding available and readily accessible. This helped member states and regions to address the crisis. It is a testimony to the flexibility and resilience of the cohesion policy, which is rooted in a spirit of solidarity. Thanks to the cohesion policy, health disparities have shrunk across the EU. Citizens in less connected parts of our union have greater access to quality medical care thanks to investments in hospitals, medical equipment and training. And far beyond from being a bankrolling investment tool, the cohesion policy provides real opportunities to millions of European citizens that otherwise would be inaccessible. It allows the unleashing of real cross-border European potential. Of course, as the eighth cohesion report clearly shows, big challenges still remain. Capital regions perform better than other regions. Across the EU, we see higher GDP and employment growth in large metropolitan areas where growing economic activity and employment are more concentrated. And higher population density in such metropolitan areas will lead to problems in the long run in sustainable urban planning and environmental policies. Upon International Women's Day last week, we flagged that in the less economically developed regions of Europe, the gender gap is officially as high high as 17%. This is unacceptable that women in less prosperous regions are so much disadvantaged when compared to men and compared to women in other regions. A gap in quality education also remains high and needs urgent action. Hand in hand with member states, we need tailored education programs to address this issue. Basic broadband access is almost universal in the EU, but very high speed connections are only available to one out of six rural residents. IT infrastructure investments alone do not automatically lead to higher growth rates, but they increase access to knowledge and education. In future, our cohesion policy will have to be more flexible and help boost innovation. We must invest in our people throughout their lives. Training at the later stages of life is as important, also in order to give people a chance to seek employment and to keep up with emerging sectors of our economy in a rapidly transforming technological green and digital age. With pressure on energy sources resulting from Russia's war on Ukraine, Europe will need to be ready for that change. Territorial cooperation, a key part of our cohesion policy, will strengthen our communities further. 
After the COVID pandemic, we had hoped to focus primarily on collectively reconstructing the cohesion of our economies. Ahead of this, however, we now need to act to protect peace in Europe and to defend our democratic values. As President of the European Parliament, I am immensely proud of our unity and our ambition to stand up tall against aggression in every region across the European Union. So thank you for the work you do every day for our democracy. Following on your fruitful discussions yesterday, I wish you further interesting discussions and debates today and cohesion in your dialogues. Thank you. President of the European Parliament there, Roberta Metzola, and underlining the importance of cohesion policy both and its achievements, both since its inception and then in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. We talked about that yesterday and, of course, now facing the war in Ukraine and its consequences. Also highlighting the challenges for cohesion policy itself. We'll be discussing some of those in relation to the green transition, the digital transition, later on today.